Welcome to Straight Talk. This is Eugene Chang. Our guest tonight is Mr. George Leung Siu Kei, Chief Executive Officer of the Hong Kong General Chamber of Commerce, which has been serving the Hong Kong business community for 160 years. It is also one of the largest business organizations in Hong Kong, with around 4,000 corporate members who combined employ around one third of Hong Kong's workforce. Tonight, Mr. Leung will tell us if the worst is over for Hong Kong's economy. Welcome, George. Hi, Eugene. Great to be here. George, um, the last few years have been mm. finding very tough for many businesses. And with this fifth wave coming on, it doesn't look like the situation is going to improve very soon. Mm. Before we go into that, I'm sure the viewers would like you to remind them what makes Hong Kong such an international and successful business centre? Well, Hong Kong actually uh, has all the condition being a great uh, international business centre. Uh, we do have uh, a very uh, independent and uh, well-functioning just a uh, common law system. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, we have a top rated regulatory system. Uh, we have a Western business practice. And also, uh, we have a very good and efficient government. And our policy framework is also very predictable, you know, for any investor coming to Hong Kong here. Uh, needless to say that we have a very simple and low tax system, which attract a lot of people. Also, uh, more important, we have a pool of talent professional. Uh, you know, that can uh, support all kinds of business in Hong Kong here. Uh, we have an uh, English-speaking culture. Uh, then also more important as well is uh, we are sitting uh, next to the second biggest economy, China, uh, so that we can have all the business potential uh, for Hong Kong uh, with all the years in the past. Right, Josh, we are ranked number four mm. in the International Financial Centers Index in 2020. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned some of our strengths, like the rule of law, uh, we're gateway to the mm. mainland, and also we have uh, uh, good talents in Hong Kong. Let me ask you, many people talk about rule of law and independent judiciary. Mm. Why is it so important for businesses, both locally and internationally? Well, basically, I mean, all sort of contract uh, must be based on certain, you know, the legal uh, framework. And uh, the Hong Kong the legal system uh, is a common law system uh, that is uh, mainly the key practice of all the Western country. So any contract uh, or agreement being signed in Hong Kong here will be recognized, uh, you know, uh, universally uh, among this, all this country. And over the years, Hong Kong has built up a very strong reputation uh, as an independent judi uh, judiciary system. And uh, most of the case being treated and very well effective and well functioned mm -hmm. uh, to be solved and um, being uh, judged by the court. So uh, this is a very uh, essential element uh, that you know make the Hong Kong uh, successful today. Yes, apart from law, I'm sure our the simple tax system we have is yes. a very attraction to yes. businesses. Actually, in 2020, Hong Kong is ranked having the second most friendly tax system in the world. But let me ask you, a place like Singapore also offers very attractive tax advantages. Mm -hmm. What other strengths do we have over cities like Singapore? Well, uh, Hong Kong and Singapore always uh, on competition uh, regarding you know, the tax uh, uh, concession uh, uh, offer to the investor. But basically, Hong Kong has a much simpler uh, taxation system. Uh, despite the effective tax rate, you know, that might be somewhat, uh, sometimes uh, lower in Singapore. But in Hong Kong, we do not have any other, uh, you know, many kinds of tax uh, imposed uh, to uh, the investor. For example, Hong Kong has no GST, mm -hmm. all right? And compared to other uh, cities, uh, we do not have any uh, capital gain tax, all right? So our tax is pretty simple, despite, you know, we apply, you know, a standard tax rate mm -hmm. uh, to uh, nearly uh, all the business. Yeah. Uh, but th that is the advantage, you know, that helped to attract the people coming to Hong Kong to invest here mm -hmm. because uh, they don't need to spend a lot of effort uh, in solving out, you know, their taxation advantage here. Um, but George, apart from that, you also mentioned Hong Kong is sitting right mm -hmm. on, on the border of the second largest economy in the world. Mm -hmm. And it's often said we are the gateway to China. Mm -hmm. is, is it only the location makes it so special? Because other cities like Shenzhen is improving, mm -hmm. Shanghai has always been there, and Guangzhou mm -hmm. is all, they're all coming up. 
how much longer can we maintain this niche just because of the location? Well, uh, the point is uh, Hong Kong, uh, as compared with other mainland city, uh, we are an international financial center. We are the only one city uh, in China that has no capital restriction, all right? And uh, we have a uh, freedom of uh, travel and uh, information as well. So, uh, you know, any foreign business coming to, uh, you know, they wanted to uh, enter the China market, Hong Kong is the most ideal place, you know, the, to sit there regional headquarters here because of all this advantage. So even though they are selling to a China market, they prefer, you know, the kinds of uh, support, you know, they can obtain in Hong Kong here. Uh, I think those are not other mainland cities that can compete with Hong Kong mm -hmm. at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, what about How much Singapore? longer can we maintain this edge? Well, uh, so long uh, Hong Kong uh, maintain our, uh, you know, free, uh, movement of the capital. And while China still have some, uh, some sort of capital restriction, uh, I think that we are still having you know, that sort of advantage. Mm -hmm. Besides, I just mentioned about the legal system. And that is also quite familiar with uh, you know, most of the uh, Western country. If they have any uh, business dispute, all right, they can do the arbitration all right, or go to court in Hong Kong here. That is familiar with them. Mm -hmm. So that is also the advantage uh, that I don't think that will be, you know, disappear in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, we are still, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, having that uh, uh, over other cities. Right. From the um, General Chamber of Commerce views, I mean, the last few years with the riot and now with mm. the COVID, mm. all businesses and our economy has been badly affected. Mm. Can you give us some figures or, or some extent how how bad are we affected right now? And and are there still some businesses that can uh, take advantage of this crisis? Well, uh, talking about the social unrest first, uh, I think uh, at that time it did you know scare some business, uh, but those are very short term because uh, business are more concerned about the law and order and also the safety, mm -hmm. uh, whether there will be any uh, ongoing. Uh, you know, uh, subordinates, you know, to the shops or maybe a transport system. But I mean, those are all gone now, right? Uh, this sort of riot, I mean, you <laughs> quite often seen in other Western countries as well. You mm -hmm. know, uh, this is uh, quite, uh, you know, familiar to the Western uh, investor. Uh, so long we can uh, back, uh, restore our uh, law and order, uh, I don't think there's a, have a, a very long lasting impact. Yes. Uh, more facing us now, uh, more challenging is the closing down, yes. uh, you know, of Hong Kong uh, to the outside world under the COVID-19. The sooner we can uh, reopen our border, I think that will help, you know, uh, we uh, reconnect. Right. That's know, something that we'll discuss in the later part of the show. And mm. we had Mrs. Annie Jie, the chair of the management association, Retail Management Association, mm. was recently on the show. Mm. And she said to us, rent is the most important factor yes. to many businesses. And recently, MTR, Lingrid, and mm. the Swire Group has offered the retail tenants some rent relief mm -hmm. to the, who are in the shops and the shopping centers. Um, how can more of the property landlords move into the similar motion so that some of the business can be lessened with the burden? I think uh, we all bundle together right now. I mm. mean, uh, if you insist not to cut down you know, your rental, uh, then the shop uh, closing down and you end up unable to land it out again right. because under uh, now a very difficult period. Mm. So you entirely lost your rent. So, I mean, the market force uh, will make the landlord you know, to cut down their rate mm. to uh, most of the tenant. Uh, Will you be encouraging your members to consider that? Well, we always urge uh, uh, the landlord, you know, if possible, to cut down their rental to uh, the tenant, mm. so that you know to help them to, to uh, go through you know such a difficult period, mm. and that will regain you know the kinds of uh, trust yes. uh, in the future, yes. and uh, that will help the long-term relationship. But of course, I mean, some of the landlord also facing problem that they are having a substantial loan, you know, to secure the property. Mm -hmm. If they have no rental, then uh, they might possibly default on the loan. I mean, that is another issue facing the landlord as well. Yes. So, George, apart from that, I mean, the government has recently announced they're going to um, issuing the fifth round of the pandemic aid mm -hmm. up to $3.57 billion. Mm -hmm. Hopefully that will help. Mm -hmm. but, and also there's some um, comments from the public that they're looking for more consumption vouchers. Mm. 
Do you think that is the way the government should help? I think the government should help more, uh, you know, um, uh, the business at this uh, very difficult moment because it's not just temporary. It has been, you know, more than two years. I mean, the situation, uh, you know, even the latest round of this uh, social distancing measure, it already cost the Hong Kong economy, you know, some 45 to 50 billion mm -hmm. Hong Kong dollar. Mm -hmm. So judging, you know, uh, the kinds of assistance, you know, that you extended to uh, the business sector is just a drop in the ocean. Do we need any more consumption vouchers for the public as well to spend? Well, definitely. I mean, uh, last time, I mean, the effect came out uh, pretty good, all right? Uh, mm -hmm. It encouraged a lot of people to spend and held a lot of shops. And there's also one saying that the handout is only limited to those who have been vaccinated. Do you think that will cause a lot of conflict within the society or do you think it's the right thing to do just for the vaccinated? I think right now, you know, the vaccination rate already reached uh, almost, almost uh, 90 percent. So it makes not too much difference whether okay. that will be extended to the vaccinated. I think it's fair to all the Hong Kong residents in here. Right. All right. We'll have a break and don't go away. Welcome back. We have been talking to Mr. George Leung, the CEO of the Hong Kong General Chamber of Commerce, about the impact of COVID on our businesses and Hong Kong's economy. So George, in the first part, thank you for sharing with us the, the strength of the Hong Kong, why Hong Kong is being such mm -hmm. a successful business centre and the current situation. Um, and we talk about the consumption vouchers and the government aid at the end, and you think the government should do more, which I totally agree with you. Um, let's move on to um, um, Hong Kong now. We, at the end of the day, the Hong Kong retail sector do need both Hong, uh, mainland and international businesses. At this moment, if we're going to maintain a zero COVID policy, um, until we reach that, the mainland borders won't be open. At the same time, we are being closed to the rest of the world for the time being. So what is the solution for the time being? We are caught in no man's land, so to, so to speak. I think this is a very worse situation to uh, local retail business. Uh, uh, just as what you said, we do not have, uh, you know, the mainland tourists, uh, neither, you know, the overseas investor. And even right now, the social uh, distancing measure prevent the people coming out to spend. So basically, you know, uh, most of the retail business is almost close to uh, closing down, uh, you know, with virtually no business at all. Mm -hmm. Uh, if that situation lasts too long, I mean, how could, you know, anyone uh, have such a, a deep pocket, you know, to support their own business for a prolonged period? Actually, since um, the term social unrest, or I would say that the right until now, yeah. is like three years. It's three years already. So, uh, you know, no matter how much money you have, you all spend on keeping your shops opening. So. Uh, the government assistance is very important. Uh, if you impose a strict uh, social distancing measure, uh, at the same time, you need to, to give them money in order to maintain the shop and keep it open. So otherwise, I mean, uh, at the end of the day, you end up with no shops in Hong yeah. Kong because they yes. are all closing down. So George, as you know, the, the budget is coming out in, in a couple of days' time and mm -hmm. being the, one of the major business organizations in Hong Kong, mm -hmm. I'm sure the Hong Kong GC has put up some proposals to the financial secretary, did, Paul Chan, did, yeah. and he's coming up in a couple of weeks to mm. discuss what he has proposed in Hong Kong. Mm. Can you outline very briefly any proposals that you have for them? Well, for we him? propose to, uh, uh, to, to the government, you know, that to continue uh, a much stronger financial assistance to all the local business being affected, particularly those affected by their social distancing measure. Uh, on the other hand, uh, they have to prepare in order to introduce another round of consumption voucher right, to help the business bring back you know, uh, to, uh, into a normal situation. Uh, also, uh, I think they need, need to cut down the tax rate to give you know, the, uh, all the business some sort of break and also uh, some sort of a more capital uh, to sustain their own business. Those are all kinds of uh, measures we propose to uh, the financial secretary to help the business. Yes. George, as you know, uh, many of our viewers are expatriates in, mm. in Hong Kong. And mm. I have been reading reports that from one of the um, relocation firms mm. over the last 18 months, mm. um, they have some figures, the number of relo uh, arrival compared to those who are leaving is from a, a ratio of three to one compared to one on one previously. Um, that means there's a drain of Hong Kong talent leaving. And 
will, will, they, will the, all the vacancies be able to be fulfilled by our mainland uh, talents as well? Well, Hong Kong now facing a chronic uh, uh, talent shortage at the moment. Uh, in our last way, uh, we uh, interviewed you know, all our members and found that you know, the talent shortage had hit them quite severely and now become you know, uh, one of the top concern to those companies. Uh, not only the expatriate, they are reluctant to come to Hong Kong here because, you know, the very long uh, quarantine period, uh, but also, uh, you know, uh, the local uh, talent also migrating out of Hong Kong uh, because of, uh, you know, uh, they're upset about the situation. Mm -hmm. And that make you know, the Hong Kong, uh, <laughs> despite a very difficult period, we still have a chronic shortage of a labor supply. Yes. Uh, you sure uh, our unemployment rate uh, still quite at a low level. Mm -hmm. uh, normally, you know, under a crisis, it's supposed to be you know shot up quite uh, substantially. But the point is, uh, while we do not have uh, enough supply of labor of all sorts, particularly the middle uh, management to the top management as well. Yes. Yes, George, um, I mean, just now we are talking about this matter of expats. I mean, mm. expats is a very important part of mm. the workforce that we treasure. Of course, it's, I mean, they, they can't do everything, mm. but it's always welcome to have more foreign talents. Mm. And there are also reports of them moving to Singapore. Sorry, I'm not picking on Singapore. I'm just mm. saying that Singapore is being mentioned repeatedly yeah, over one the of news, the sites. Yeah. One of the sites. And particularly, not only that, some of our high net worth individuals mm. are reallocating their funds mm. into that Mm. city as well. Mm. Having uh, property prices cheaper than Hong Kong and mm. rents are lower, mm. um, is it, will, should this be a concern to the Hong Kong government? Well, indeed, this is a big concern. Uh, it's just a matter, hopefully, this is uh, not uh, lasting for too long. Uh, the point is, uh, you know, uh, the closing down of Hong Kong, you know, the two uh, outside contact, make them difficult, you know, to travel. Indeed, you know, you drive away a lot of talents out of Hong Kong here. And even, you know, the high first individual look for some place, you know, to, um, uh, to invest their money. Uh, I mean, we have been like that for two years, and that's why it's not surprising to see such a, uh, such a trend. But hopefully, if we can, you know, uh, to reopen our borders sooner, then we can, you know, attract, you know, those people coming back to Hong Kong. So it is in Hong Kong's and our government's first priority to open up our borders as soon as we have everything under control. I think the government has to come up with a roadmap because uh, I heard a lot of uh, members, particularly the foreign expatriate, uh, told us uh, they don't mind, you know, they closing down because of the COVID situation. But you do have to have a roadmap how long you will keep the situation. So people situation. can plan their yeah, you have to plan. remaining year of a schedule. Uh, right now, you wanted to get to COVID zero. And after that, what? You know, will mm. you open up or shorten your quarantine period for the outside expatriate coming back to Hong Kong? Uh, I, I think they are mostly upset. They do not have the information. Mm. All right. How the government will be going to do. And... Uh, I mean, under that uncertain situation, uh, I think it's not surprising the people moving out first before they consider coming back. Uh, George, I'm sure it's not only the foreign companies having frustration, <laughs> I'm sure the local residents are as well with the current res restrictions. Mm. Our once uh, really bustling city mm. is really usually and being deserted. If you mm. drive around in Hong Kong after mm. six, you, you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, yeah. How much longer can our business um, sustain, I'm sure we're doing work from home because of the COVID restrictions, mm. um, but not all the business can survive. Mm. And what can be done from the Chamber of Commerce point of view? Well, I think uh, uh, reopening the border is the most uh, uh, top five priorities at the mm -hmm. moment. I mean, uh, we hope that, that uh, you know, uh, with the assistance from uh, the mainland government, uh, we can achieve uh, you know, uh, occurrence of uh, the virus situation in Hong Kong as soon as possible. Uh, Chamber, we encourage people, you know, to go digitalization mm -hmm. uh, or automa automation that, you know, rely less, you know, the face-to-face -face, uh, contact. But you know that not all the business can do it, you know, like mm -hmm. the retail business, yes. all right, uh, those are face-to-face -face, yes. uh, yeah. uh, content. 
So uh, I think uh, at the end of the day, still talking about you know the opening up of border is the most important. Yeah. I'm sorry to ask another sort of not too positive news coming up because <laughs> with the vaccine pass, mm. which is in place in a couple mm. of days' time. Mm. 70% of retail association members ex accept, expect mm. the foot traffic to, to the shopping malls to drop by half. Mm. Do you think it's a valid concern? I think that's indeed a valid concern. And uh, you know that most of the local uh, retail business, they are SME. Mm. And that is uh, one of the backbones you know, to Hong Kong uh, in terms of employment. And uh, those are not really capital rich, and they cannot last too long. Mm -hmm. So that's why opening up the economy is so important. Right. Uh, I mean, you saw the experience in the Western country, uh, why they so quickly, you know, to go to a high vaccination rate and start opening the border because their economy can, cannot withstand So it's a long. pity that we didn't pick up the vaccination until recently. Uh, I, I'm, I'm a bit glad now it's almost reached uh, 90% uh, for the first dose, but yes. I hope the people can uh, get uh, vaccinated for the second and the first dose as soon as yes. possible. Yes. Uh, without doing so, uh, we, we are uh, very difficult to yes. open up our economy again. I yes. mean, everyone will be suffering. Yes. George, uh, Mr. Lok Wei Ling, the director of the liaison office in Hong Kong, mm -hmm. met with many business leaders last Friday, mm -hmm. calling them to unite in action. Mm -hmm. Since then, mm -hmm. we, many have stepped up and we have seen donations of land for a temporary hospital, mm. hotel rooms for isolation, mm. more personal protective uh, gowns, mm. rapid test kits and many other forms of help. Do you see this, rap, uh, this private and public uh, in the, I mean, uh, intervention together? Has it come too late? Well, uh, never anything too late. I mean, uh, it, it needed to act right now, uh, to, be, uh, to be sure, because uh, right now is a very stringent situation. Yes. And uh, we are all sitting on the same boat, okay. uh, whether private okay. or public. Okay. So we are, I mean, uh, the business sector strongly support this initiative right. to Which help you know, to clear yeah, the situation. Let mm. me ask you the last question or the title of this program. Mm. Is the worst over yet for Hong Kong's economy? And what, uh, what is your outlook for 2022 and 2023? I'm sure the viewers are going to ask you. We haven't had many good messages so far. I mean, positive <laughs> messages or factual. What is your view? Well, I'm not sure whether we are in the middle of the crisis, but the point is uh, definitely, you know, the worst not over yet. Uh, hopefully, I mean, uh, with the aid of uh, the mainland uh, authorities, that we can help to clear up the situation as soon as, uh, say, uh, in the middle of the uh, of this year, then we can start, you know, the, to uh, reopen up, you know, uh, partially at least, you know, in the second half, so uh, we can have our co economy somewhat uh, better. Uh, but I think uh, this year, 2022, is mm -hmm. uh, still pretty difficult. Okay. Uh, we look forward to 2023, you know, a full opening up of Hong Kong. That's our hope. So many thanks, Mr. George Leung, for coming tonight to share your views of the current challenges on the Hong Kong's businesses and the future outlook. Stay healthy and have a good week and good night. Mm -hmm.